Hi guys, I'm Lena Michalik and I'm here to welcome all of you first time pistol buyers. I know there are a ton of them out there, especially right now. And what I'm gonna do is give you a little at home practice before you even get to the range. I'm gonna show you five drills to kind of just make yourself a little bit more familiar. This is a, uh, a get to know your new gun type of thing. So the first thing actually before we even get into the drill is I'm gonna suggest that you go watch how to shoot a pistol. That video should be linked down below along with recoil management that'll be listed down below and then be on the lookout in the future I will be sharing a little 50 round practice session with you so when you do get to the range you know what to do when you get there all right so the very first thing we need to do realize every gun you're gonna have to pick it up <laughs> so we're gonna start by making sure that everything is clear my pistol is clear both of my magazines are totally empty and what we're gonna do is called dry fire this is pretty much just going through the motions of shooting without the boom so our gun is clear we're gonna drop our slide now we're gonna place it on the table now there are a lot of ways to pick up a gun all of those are wrong. Even this, well, look, it's kind of, it's kind of there, but it's wrong. So I'm going to show you how to pick the gun up off the table correctly, because one of the most important things in shooting is establishing a good grip. And every time you touch a gun, you want to establish the right grip. There is no in between grip. There's either the right one or nothing else. <laughs> So once you watch that how to shoot a pistol, you'll know what grip you want to use. And this is going to be how you pick it up off the table. Always use both hands. If you're gifted with two hands, well, let's use both of them all the time. So this table is here. I mean, uh, my pistol is here on the table. I'm going to use both hands. I'm going to use my left hand to kind of pick it up. And then my right hand to come up and establish a high up grip, as high as I can. Remember, the lower I get, the worse my grip is, the more recoil and all of this I'm going to feel. And in dry fire, you want everything to be perfect because we're building up that muscle memory. So we use our left hand to kind of pick it up, give us room to establish that high grip. Our finger is going to fall along the side of the slide, hand up high, and there we go. We have our left hand established. Right hand. I always say... Um, for people that are new, they have a tendency not to know what to do with their fingers. You know, they have one finger, two finger, no finger here. Um, left hand is in a mitten, guys. These stay together. They're always in a mitt. So, right hand is established, left hand will come up, and you're here. You don't even have to present it to your target. You can if you want, but mainly we're just going to pick it up, and you're going to do that ten times. Ready? One. Two, isn't this fun? Three, making sure that that grip is perfect each time. And here's another little tip. If you're having difficulty establishing the same grip every time, you kind of have what we call floating hands. You know, this hand moves all around and everything. What you can do is you can establish that exact grip and you can get a friend to come by and draw a line on your hands. Hey John, come here. <laughs> So, draw a straight line across both my hands. Nope, across this way. Oh. <laughs> there you go. From here? Yeah. Just straight? Yep. Just something that I can match up both my hands. All right. So, now I know that when these two lines match up, my grip is correct. Isn't that an easy reference? So, every time I pick up, I'm going to match up these two lines. Match them up. And here. And again. Match up my lines, make sure everything is good, come up. Now, another thing that you'll, or another little tip to look for on your grip is you're kind of going to want three points of contact. You're going to want the web of your hand right here to go all the way up in that beaver tail. You're going to want this right here, the top of your left pointer finger to hit the bottom of your trigger guard and then your thumbs to lay on top of each other. So if you have those three things, you have web of the hand here and thumbs, I want you to know you're gonna be able to make it pretty far. So we'll go again. There we go. 
And every time, if you are bringing that gun up, you better be finding that front sight because finding that front sight is oh so important because you're not gonna be able to hit what you wanna hit when you get out to the range if you're not. So, once again, lining up, presenting, finding our front sight, putting it down. All right, and then once you're comfortable with that, once you do that at least 10 times through, we'll move on to the second drill. So once you can pick your gun up off the table comfortably and you're establishing that same grip, we're gonna work on the biggest safety tool you have on the range, and that is your trigger finger. So this is called an up-down drill. It's pretty darn simple. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure our grip is totally established how we want. We're gonna come to what is kind of a, a low ready, a resting position for when you are on the range. Um, and this is all about your trigger finger. Because remember, if you're not on target, if you're not ready to engage, where's that trigger finger? Along the edge. So we're gonna come here. We're gonna find our target down range. We're gonna present the gun. Finger's gonna go to the trigger. Then we're gonna go off and down. And that is it. This is an up down drill. We do this so many times with new shooters because once again, this is the biggest safety tool you have on the range. So we wanna make sure that we establish that muscle memory because unless you're a shooter, when you go to grab something, all of your fingers grab it. You don't just go like this. So we need to make sure that when we are picking guns up, that it becomes a second nature for this finger to stay straight. And this is how you get there. We're gonna go up, down, up, down. And this is it, guys. This is just building muscle memory so that you can be the safest person on the range possible. You're gonna do this at least 20 times, at least. If you were brand, brand new to shooting, this is a drill you cannot do enough. Like if, and if you know what's another good thing? When you do go somewhere and you're a new shooter and you pick your gun up like this, everybody will be like, oh wow. They'll respect you a little bit more. They will feel more comfortable around you because you're showing great gun handling skills. That's it. Making sure you're finding that front sight, lining it up in that rear notch. If you um, have iron sights, if you have a dot, making sure you're finding that dot, putting it on target, and touching that trigger. All right, do that 20 times or as many times as you need to be comfortable, and then we'll move on to drill number three. Drill number three, we gotta get bullets in the guns. Obviously, we don't have bullets, but we gotta get mags in the gun. Now, before we do that, I want to show you two variations of how to release the magazines. Because once you get them in, all right, but we gotta get them back out. <laughs> now, this right here is the mag release button. Now, if you're a lefty, having a gun that can be switched out be ambidextrous is a huge advantage. Um, most polymer guns, this is an X5, um, all the 320 line is ambidextrous. You can switch out this button to be on this side so that when you're a lefty, you can hit it with your thumb. So if you are a lefty, I do suggest switching that. There are tons of videos out there. And if you're not comfortable with that, you can go to your local gun shop or local gunsmith and they can easily do that for you. So once you have your mag release on the side that you prefer, there are two options. So you can, if your hands are smaller, you can hit it with your support hand. So you go from shooting to hitting it here. You keep these fingers here. You don't just come off and you know hit it. You also don't come here and do this. You come here, you open up your grip just enough to hit the button. Your mag will drop. Uh, if you are dry firing at home, realize when you drop these mags, they're gonna drop. Uh, I prefer to stand over at table, and if you don't have a table to stand over, make sure you have shoes on, because these will smash your toes. I know that from experience. <laughs> so, we have our magazine in. Option one is to open up our grip, place our support hand thumb on it, push, and there we go. We've dropped a mag. Option two is the one that I actually use. Um, both are fast and efficient when practiced. So don't feel like one is necessarily superior to the other. It's just whichever one is better for you. So option two is I'm going to actually hit it with my strong hand thumb. Now you can see I can't reach it, 
right now in my shooting grip. So what I have to do is actually turn the gun a little bit in my hand to hit the mag release button and then I switch it back. So shooting here. One more time. Bam. So there are your two main options for getting the magazine out of the gun. Now, whenever we pick up a magazine, we want our finger to run along the front side of the magazine. Which side is the front side of the magazine? Well, it's whichever one the bullets face. So if I had bullets in here, they'd be pointing this direction. I want the bullet to face my finger. So whether you're working off a belt or off a table or out of a bag or upside down, it doesn't matter. You're always going to want this finger to run along the front side of your magazine. And that is because when you do your reload, it makes it consistent. If I grab it like this, I have no idea <laughs> where the end of this magazine is and it will be very inconsistent. So we run our finger along the front, we come here, we move and we slam it in with our palm. So one more time, we'll go from here to coming back, placing our finger along the front, lining everything up and giving it a good old schwap. Schwap is the correct term for reloading in case you were unaware. I know you're new, so I'm gonna introduce you to all sorts of lingo. So we're here, finger along the front, magazine in, reestablishing grip. So now that I've shown you how to drop the mag, how to insert it. We're gonna get into the drill. What we're gonna do is this 10 times through. You're gonna start with a magazine in your gun. You're gonna to come to your nice little low ready here. We're gonna come up on target, find our sights, find our trigger, finger off the trigger. We're gonna drop the mag whichever way we feel. We're gonna find our next magazine with our finger along the front, line it up. Give it a good old push, reestablish our perfect grip, present the gun to the target, finger to trigger. Finger off trigger, and then we're gonna reset to do it again. Now we're gonna do this about 10 times through. So we have our magazine in, we're gonna come establish our grip, and even if you wanna get wiggity wild with it, you can start with it off the table and you can do everything together. So picking our gun up, establishing our grip, finding our sights, finding our trigger, finger off trigger, dropping our mag, finding our next magazine, finger along the front, lining it up, sending it home, establishing our perfect grip again, and pushing back out to target. We're gonna do that again once more. Up, sights, trigger, finger off, magazine release, finding our next mag, Sending it home, establishing a good grip, finding our sights, finding our trigger. There you go, guys. You're going to do that 10 times through minimum. Remember, more time behind this gun, the better and the more comfortable and confident you'll be. So do all of these drills as many times as you want or as many times as you have time for. Now moving on to number four. Now that we know how to reload, we're going to take our magazine, put it back in our gun. Now we're going to work on slide lock. Now, this is going through the motions. Realize that if you have ammunition in the gun, it's going to be a little bit different when you do get out to the range, but we're going to mainly learn the motions. So we have a magazine inserted. Now, when we have an empty magazine in our gun and we rack the slide all the way to the rear, it will lock back. And this simulates running out of ammo when you're shooting, which will happen. So when this happens, we're going to take our magazine out and we're going to practice dropping the slide. This is mainly just gun manipulation here. I want you to get used to racking the slide, going to slide lock, dropping the slide, doing all of that, getting super comfortable with this gun. So there are, let's see, we're going to put our empty mag in. We're going to pull it. Now there are multiple ways to rack the slide. Now, one thing to keep in mind is when you do go to a range, you're going to be operating on what's called a 180 degree. So pretty much from here to here, 
I'm good to point my gun. But anything past this is unsafe because usually we're working on a line, a line of people. So imagine when you're dry firing, having people on either side of you and your muzzle can never go past this angle. It has to work within this. So a lot of times when we go to rack, their people go to rack, they struggle with it and uh, that's fine. There's a little bit of technique behind it. One thing is I always like to turn my body because naturally to bring this gun into me, Look at that, my neighbor's not gonna be very happy with me sitting here trying to do this, pointing my gun at him. So we're gonna wanna keep our gun always down range. We can turn our body, now we can bring it in close. Why we like to bring it in close is, where do you open a jar? Where do you thread a needle? Where's your power place? It's right in close to your body. You don't do anything out here. So if we're struggling to rack our slide, we bring the gun in close to our body. My preferred method is, to do just a clamp over the um, rear serrations. You never want to have your hand over the chamber. Um, fingers can get pinched in here and also if there's ammo in there you can kind of just cause a lot of malfunction. So you want to stay behind or in front. I personally prefer behind. So we're going to clamp over the top palms and fingers right here. This hand is still in that perfect grip. And then with the motion, I'm going to push forward and pull back at the same time. Now we have an empty magazine in here, so it'll automatically lock back. So we're gonna clamp here and we're gonna go and it should lock to the rear, all right? So once it's locked to the rear, we want to drop the slide. We're gonna go ahead and take that magazine out. Now there are two main ways of dropping the slide. One is you have this little button right here that you can not push in, but directly down. I'm gonna say it one more time. You don't push it in, not like the mag release. You're gonna push it down. So you put your thumbs on top and you push down and that will drop your slide. Another way to do it is simply to do the same thing we did to lock it to the rear. You can just pull back and let go and that will lock it to the rear. Um, people do it this way, called the slingshot. Uh, I'm, I, I like to keep everything pretty much the same. I don't like a whole bunch of different ways. So this is my main way of racking, and this is the way that I lock my slide to the rear. This is the main way that I drop my slide. It's kind of just the main way I do it all, but you'll find what you prefer. So now that we know all that information, I can finally get to the drill. We're gonna put our magazine in. We're going to rack it, we're going to take our magazine out, and now I would say you do it both ways. Find what you like best. I'm going to do five times dropping my slide with the slide release button. All right, now I'm going to put my magazine back in, rack it, take my magazine out, drop my slide. Put my magazine in. Rack it, making sure that if I were on a line, my muzzle is always staying down range. Drop my magazine, drop my slide. Magazine out, drop it. Now, realize when I'm doing these reloads, you see how I'm doing the reloads the same I showed you earlier? Every motion you do here needs to be the same. So just because we're focusing on dropping the slide doesn't mean that my grip wavers and it doesn't mean that my reloads waver. I'm going to do it again. Insert the magazine, rack the slide, and now I'm going to drop it by racking it to the rear. I'm going to do that. Pull back, push forward, and let go. So pull back, let go. Once again, magazine in, lock it, bam. So we're just getting comfortable with all the different manipulations of our firearm. One more time. There we go guys. So now you're getting a little bit more familiar with you know all those buttons and levers and how you interact with the gun. We're going to move on to our very last drill, number five. So the very last drill you guys are probably like, well we haven't really even dry fired yet, which dry firing is, are you ready? Listen for this sound. You hear that little click? That is the hammer of my gun actually falling. That is me 
pulling the trigger all the way to the rear and the hammer falling. Now realize that you do that each time you pull that trigger and you have that click, you're going to need to rack the gun again for it to reset the hammer. So we're gonna manually do this, whereas if you were at the range shooting, you know, if I were to pull the trigger and there were a round in it, the slide would function, would slide back, it would pick up a new round, and it would feed it into the chamber, resetting my hammer for me. But because we're not, you know, shooting rounds here, we're gonna manually do it so that we get to know our trigger. Now this is what I spend the most time doing dry firing because how you interact with this little bit of lever right here is everything. You want it to be smooth, constant motion. And remember, we're always finding those front sights. So we're gonna have our good grip. We're gonna rack it. We're gonna push up, find our target, find our sight, pull that trigger smooth all the way to the rear. We should see no motion in that front sight and that front sight should be what we're focusing on exclusively. Now, if you do this, see both my mags are over here. If you do this and you try and pull the trigger and nothing happens in your gun, a lot of firearms have what's called a magazine safety, which is where the hammer will not fall or the striker will not fire unless there is a magazine in it. Now, if I try and rack my gun with an empty mag in it, what happens? It locks to the rear. Well, realize to reset the striker or the hammer doesn't take a full motion. Actually, all I have to do is that right there. So magazine in or magazine out, your preference. And we're gonna do this at least 20 times. We're gonna find our perfect grip. We're gonna push up, find our sights, finger on the trigger, smooth press to the rear, finger off our trigger, come back. We're gonna rack it just a tiny bit. And that's it. And then we're gonna do it again. Sights, finger, press, finger straight, come back, rack it. Up, finger, sights, press, back down. Sights, finger, press, finger off, come back down. And this is it. Up, and not much will get you more ready for the range than this right here. And, realize, and if you accidentally rack it too far back and it locks back, all you gotta do is push the little slide release button. Boop. I know guys, it's really not that exciting. It's not that whiz bang, it's not that magical, but if you go through the motions of dry firing before you get to the range, you will be so much more comfortable. And this is something that you can do without purchasing ammo. So it's free. Once you buy this gun, you can get to know your gun so well without even having to go. So if you're under time restraints, if you're under financial strain, anything, listen, just put the gun on the table, make sure there's no ammunition around, make sure you're pointing it in a somewhat safe direction, there's nothing behind it, you're comfortable with it, and just spend some time getting to know your brand new gun. So I hope you found that helpful. If you do have any questions or you wanna expand your knowledge in shooting, don't worry, there's only a, an entire playlist of videos on this YouTube channel, so make sure you check them all out and leave us comments and let us know what else you wanna learn. Bye. <laughs>